The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the x everyone. I am Rob McConnell, and for the next hour, I'm going to be your host and your guide as together we'll cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the x It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And the x comes to you right here on the x Broadcast Network, Talkstar Radio Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, iHeartRadio, Simul Radio, and Simul TV. If you'd like to send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, exxon Radio TV. My guest this hour is Dr. Stephen Skinner, and we're going to be talking about magic. And after graduating from Sydney University, Stephen Skinner began a career as a geography lecturer at what is now the University of Technology in, Sk- in Sydney. He authored his first book on esoteric subjects, The Search for Abraxas, in 1972 with co-author Neville Drury. He migrated to London in the same year and co-authored with Francis King, The Techniques of High Magic, in 1976. After spending some time in the manuscript reading rooms of what was then the British Museum, he produced Terrestrial Astrology, uh, Divinatory Geomancy. Uh, which was the most complete work in the English on the history and the practice of Western divinatory geomancy. And uh, joining me now is Dr. Stephen Skinner. And Dr. Skinner, welcome to the Exxon, sir. Uh, It's good to be here. Um, Where did your interest in magic come from, sir? Well, it really started when I was uh, just a kid. I used to, when I was at school, make some money by buying and selling second-hand books, normally to my my colleagues at school. And one day in a second-hand bookshop, I came across um, a, a book of grimoires. Um, grimoires are sort of practical handbooks of magic, and um, it almost insisted that I bought it, um, and I did, and I went home and read it, and I thought, this all sounds very unbelievable, being a curious kid, I decided to try one of the experiments out, and I did it. Um, I took care of all the details, did it, and to my surprise, it worked. So from then on, I was sort of hooked. When I um, I graduated, I graduated uh, English philosophy and geography, um, and so I looked at... Um, early geographers, and one of them that I came across was a guy called uh, Dr. John Dee. He worked for Queen Elizabeth I uh, on navigation. He came up with the idea of the British Empire, incidentally, wow. uh, and suggested that she uh, put out ships and things to do the various bits of exploration that happened in the late 1500s. So he was a pretty logical guy. Uh, he also translated uh, Euclid, um, the, the master of geometry out of Greek into English. I thought he was a pretty bright guy. Spent about half of his time involved with magic and scrying mm-hmm. um, and finding things out using crystal ball um, uh, for the advantage of Queen Elizabeth I. So I thought if, if this guy can be so logical and he can get involved in magic, well then so can I. And uh, I suppose I've spent a fair bit of my life um, 
looking at these things and experimenting with them practically. Well, so that's, that's the short answer. Could you explain what magic is? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. If we were living um, prior to, say, um, 1900, then the answer would be very simple. But um, in the last hundred or so years, uh, people have made it much more complicated. But anyway, if we were living back in the ancient world or, or even in 17th century Britain, uh, the easy answer would be uh, using spirits to make things happen. Mm. Um, this is rather obscured in uh, the last hundred years when New Age um, definition of magic would come in and people have assumed it was intention or meditation or whatever else. It's nothing to do with that. The, the real mechanics of magic is using spirits or angels or demons or whatever you like to call them to achieve things that you couldn't otherwise do. Um, and I discovered there's a fairly complicated but very clear technology involved. And if all the steps are actually taken correctly, then nine times out of ten the desired result happens. This is not a very popular sort of um, view in the 21st century, I guess. And so um, I felt... Um, that I had to research it. So I, I went back and looked at a lot of the, the sorcerer's manuals mm -hmm. um, and published a few of them, uh, edited a few of them. And, um, well, that's sort of where it started. But as a basic definition, magic is, is using uh, non-physical spirits to achieve things that you couldn't otherwise do. And how do you get these spirits to cooperate with you and to do what you want them to do in order to have the, the magic succeed? Excellent question. Um, there are a series of, um, as I said, these, these manuals, practical yes. manuals, uh, which give the invocations that are necessary to attract them. You then have to provide them with the, the right incense. Um, you have to do it at the right time. Um, people ask me, why do you have to have it at the right time? And I, I give them a, a parallel. If you want to go to a dentist and you turn up at 3 a.m. in the morning, uh, <laughs> you won't get your teeth done. Um, if you want a particular spirit, then you have to call them in a, on a particular hour, on a particular day. So all these things are lined up. Um, then it's necessary to um, bind them, uh, tell them exactly what you want done, and then dismiss them. And um, that, in a nutshell, is a technique. But if you get them to work with you, and why would they want to leave? Because as I understand it, talking to other people and uh, who deal in the spirit world, they want to communicate with us. They, they want to, to work with us. So why would they go away? Or is the information from the psychics and the mediums wrong? Okay, so... You are presumably talking about spiritualists um, who call up um, the dead or whatever. Yes. I, I'm talking about a different class of spirits. I'm, I'm talking about ones who are not comfortable in the physical world and want to go as soon as possible. Um, and they're the ones that can get things done. The, the, the dead, um, dead humans, uh, much the same as live humans, can't always do these things. Um, anyway, my experience is that when um, allowed to leave, they leave pretty rapidly. What is it a spirit can do and a spirit can't do? Okay. Um, let me give you one example okay. um, of, of many things that have happened to me uh, where I've actually used magic. Um, I used to live in a, an old mansion uh, near Lewis in um, Sussex in England. Uh, it was fairly deserted, a long, uh, long way from the town itself. Uh, and one weekend I came out to London, went back again, and discovered that uh, everything in my house had been stolen. Some burglars oh, no. had come, they'd removed everything, furniture, carpets, the works. I, I learned uh, later that they'd actually hired a van to come and clean my house out. So I was pretty annoyed with that and wanted my stuff back. So I called a spirit of Mercury. Now, Mercury deals both with um, books and uh, things that I'm interested in, 
but also with thieves and instructed that spirit that I just wanted my stuff back. I didn't necessarily want the, the burglars punished or anything. I just wanted my stuff. Uh, two days later, I had a very strange phone call um, out of the blue. And uh, it was a guy who said that he knew where my stuff was. Anyway, to cut a long story short, uh, he agreed to meet with me. And he turned out, in fact, to be one of the burglars. Uh, I told the police. Uh, the police um, tracked the meeting. Uh, actually, they put a wire on me. I felt it was a bit James Bondy, but anyway. Uh, and he said, oh, I, I want to give you your stuff back, but I want you to pay me for it. So I just agreed and went along. Went back to his house, which was completely furnished with my stuff. Mm. My tablecloth on the table, my crockery there, etc., etc., and um, as he was busy talking to me, the police burst in, arrested him, and I got all my stuff back. Um, in the end, strangely enough, uh, he wasn't convicted of burglary, uh, which leaves one wondering exactly what the courts do. But um, I did get everything back. So, All right, we're going to have to have a little bit of a cliffhanger here, uh, Dr. Skinner, because I have to take my first break, sir. Exonation, my guest this hour is Dr. Stephen Skinner. And his website is www.sskinner.com. And Dr. Skinner and I will return on the other side of this break as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I'm Rob McConnell. Don't go away. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next, we meet here in the X Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember, X Zone Nation, keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. You have heard of the X Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand worldwide and more does this sound like tomorrow's television well it is but you can have it today right now it is simul tv simul tv offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like Zone, sci-fi and horror we are worldwide no other provider offers that 500 built-in video games no need to have an extra expensive system we have them included free video on demand live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. 
Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Exxon Nation, Dr. Stephen Skinner is my very special guest this hour. His website is sskinner.com. And before we went to the break, uh, Dr. Skinner was telling us about how his home had been burglarized. They took everything. Um, to make a long story short, with the aid of a spirit, things had a funny way of turning around. In fact, one of the, the, pers- one of the people involved in the burglary actually called up Dr. Stevens and uh, had him meet him somewhere. Dr. Stevens called the police. He was tapped. He was wiretapped. And uh, during the conversation, the police, uh, Dr. Stevens went to the uh, burglar's house under pretext that he was going to pay him money to get all his own stuff back. The police burst into the room and uh, arrested the the suspect, but apparently the suspect didn't spend any time in jail or anything. So take it from there, doctor. Okay, so that was just one example of um, spirits doing Mm -hmm. something that you couldn't otherwise do. I mean, the police had admitted to me, oh, our chances of finding this burglar um, uh, are pretty pretty much zero. Um, So let me see. Uh, Yeah, another example. Um, A friend of mine was trying to collect a particular set of books, which just were not turning up. Um, he was looking in bookshops, etc. So I asked one spirit to assist him with that, and he was virtually inundated by calls and letters from uh, booksellers offering him uh, books by this particular author. So it triggers all things, um, I don't want to say in another dimension, but uh, it'll have physical results. Um, it's not... Um, it's not about spirituality, it's, it's not about meditation, it's not about mysticism. Um, it is a, a technique. And looking around, um, I discover that, that uh, this information is not really passed, it is passed on a sort of um, master-disciple basis, and that the, the books written by these magicians who successfully used it are called grimoires, and most of them are still in manuscript in the British Museum, British Library or the Bodleian Library. And so I spent some time editing and producing copies of the Key of Solomon or the Lamegaton, which have these, these techniques in them. And um, I thought, well, I'll look back a little bit further to see if uh, the ancient world used the same techniques so I went to the trouble of learning ancient Greek, which was one of the hardest things I've ever done, so I could read the um, papyri of the Greek, uh, Greco-Egyptian magicians, and uh, of which there's quite a lot. And lo and behold, the same techniques were being used exactly. Different words, different, um, different stories, but the same techniques 2,000 years ago. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Now, you used the spirits for good in these examples that you've given us. Would you be able to, if necessary, or if you wanted to, get the spirits to do things that were not so nice? Um, Yeah, I don't think there's really a moral dimension here. Whether you do things that are not nice, Mm -hmm. um, it's like uh, somebody asked me, can you show me how to retaliate against these enemies? And, and will there be bad karma in it for me? And I said, well, you know, if you hit a person or if you use a spirit to hit the person, the, the karmic result, if you like, is, is roughly the same. Um, so, that, no, they're neutral. Uh, they will do um, whatever they're asked to as long as it's within their range of capabilities. The, um, that it's usually talked about as the office of the spirit. So, for example, if you have a spirit of um, Mercury, then they probably will not do things which would normally be considered Saturnian or Solar or Venusian. 
if you wanted to use spirits to uh, improve your love life, then you have to pick the right one, which would be a Venusian spirit. You have to pick the right day to do the operation, which would be Friday. You have to pick the right hour, which would be the first or the eighth hour of the day, and so on. And then if you do all these things, um, then the result will, as I said, nine times out of ten uh, work. Um, and if you want to do bad things, um, then uh, you also have to pick the appropriate spirit to do the bad things. So maybe it would be a martial spirit. Um, I know one um, guy who was experimenting with that, um, and he didn't do it very well, uh, but he called a martial spirit, and then apparently nothing happened. And he went for a walk uh, late at night and um, fell over something um, and smashed his face on the ground. So the martial spirit actually did it just to the wrong person. Oh, my gosh. Um, so, yes, it's the short answer. What, what is the origin of these spirits, sir? Where do they come from? <laughs> I don't know. That's like asking me, what is the origin of lions or what is the origin of horses? Well, no, no, well they, let me, they've let been me... around for a long time. They're not, they're not dead humans, that's okay. for sure. They are, they are, if you like, a separate, a separate species. Um, some people say that it's the old pagan gods that mm -hmm. were demoted by Christianity um, to being uh, demons or devils. Uh, so some of the names of the spirits do actually have some similar similarity to the, some of the ancient gods, but I'm not sure about that. And Christianity has spent from about 400 AD to the present time busily trying to suppress magic. Um, I don't really quite know why, but they've, it's been fairly successful in destroying most of the records um, made by the magicians over that period of time. So the origin of the spirits might be, um, as it were, demo demoted pagan gods, um, but I don't think so. Uh, beyond that, I really don't know. What is the difference, sir, between a magician and a wizard? <laughs> well, that's, that's semantics. <laughs> um, magician's an older term. It goes back to the, the Greek uh, magos and uh, referred actually to... Um, to a particular type of Persian uh, magician. Uh, wizard, I think wizard probably, um, uh, would it be an Anglo-Saxon term? I'm not sure. Um, I never used the term wizard. Um, I know that, for example, you might have asked me what's the difference between a magician and a witch, and that, that would be a little bit easier. Uh, Wicca's um, a word which, which meant wise person or wise right. woman. And really only dates back to about the 10th century. Um, um, people who call themselves witches nowadays, I think, are very, very different from the ones who were persecuted in the 14th to the 17th century. Why do you think, sir, the old ways are coming back? Why is magic, the type of magic that you and I are talking about this evening, why is there more interest in it now than in, I, I would hesitate to say in how long a period is it because of the internet is it because of the media attention that it's getting or is it because people are looking for knowledge and they're turning to magic because it can't be felt found anywhere else um well yes i think people are looking for knowledge they're looking for things that uh, these these are technologies these are things that have been lost and uh, they're digging them up but why did that happen mm -hmm. well there was um uh, an increase in interest in magic around about uh, 1900 when the Golden Dawn uh, order was founded. Uh, and then it sort of lapsed and people became much more materialistic uh, because I suppose they lived through two world wars. And then I think the next thing that got things going was really the, the hippie and drug revolution mm. because back in the 60s, uh, people realized after having tripped on LSD or, or whatever, that there are other dimensions to life rather than the just the physical world that you can touch, feel, or sit on. Um, and people started to explore various uh, spiritual modalities. Um, uh, works by people like Alistair Crowley came back into print. I helped a few of those into print myself. 
Um, and people got disenchanted with science. Uh, when people ask me, well, um, what's the difference between science and whatever? I say that science is actually just a method. You come up with a theory, you test the theory, you do various experiments, right. and you discover a law. The um, magic can also be looked upon as a science because you can have a series of repeated experiments that work the same way each time. Fascinating. Please stand by, uh, Dr. Singer. You and I have to, um, I'm sorry, Dr. Skinner. You and I have to go to our break at the bottom of the hour with the news. And Exonation, uh, my guest this hour is Dr. Stephen Skinner. And if you'd like to find out more about Dr. Skinner, www.skinner.com. That's S S K I N N E R.com. That's S Skinner. Dot com. Don't forget, Exonation, you can actually go online to www.xchroniclesnewspaper.com and either read online or download a PDF of the current edition of the X Chronicles newspaper. And it is with our compliments and the compliments of our advertisers as well. Once again, that website is www.xchroniclesnewspaper.com. Dot com. I'll be back on the other side of this news break with my guest this hour, Dr. Stephen Skinner, as we continue talking about magic here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My name is Rob McConnell. You can always send me an email, X-Zone at x Broadcast studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond. You're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. ABS Media Day. You have heard of the Exxon? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone radio show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone broadcast network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Rob McConnell here presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. 
It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Welcome back, everyone. Dr. Stephen Skinner is my very special guest this hour. His website is www.sskinner.com. Thank you very much for joining us tonight, Doctor. I've been looking forward to speaking to you ever since we we knew that we were going to be talking about magic. uh, Doctor, what is the difference between magic and ceremonial magic? Okay, um... Well, ceremonial magic is just a subset of magic, um, but it's it's the more formal one where you do a series of five different steps, you invoke in a certain way, you use certain incenses mm-hmm. and so forth, and that um, that's quite complicated. Uh, looking back in history, the sort of people who would uh, do it were quite often members of the aristocracy. Uh, for example, even the... Um, Lord of the Admiralty uh, back in the 1600s was involved in this, um, uh, the Master of the Rolls as well, and so forth. At the other end of the scale, you have like the the village cunning man who uses some of these techniques but doesn't have the facility of a large um, deserted place to work in. And he will use a sort of abbreviated grimoire um, Cunning men also uh, practiced um, a sort of basic medicine, probably herbalism, using something like Culpeper's herbal. So one of the things I've been working on recently is a, is a cunning man's grimoire, uh, which uh, has just recently been published. The, the name is Cunning Man's Grimoire. And um, it's a fascinating manuscript because... It was uh, begun in about 1557, so um, uh, in uh, the beginning of Elizabeth I's reign, um, in Oxford by a guy called Thomas Allen, who um, did uh, various bits of magic for members of the aristocracy, including um, getting rid of hauntings and so forth. And... um, when he uh, when he passed on, uh, it was inherited by another cunning man called Old Cornelius, who also uh, lived and worked in Oxford. Um, and he had he kept the manuscript till 1632, and then his daughter sold it to another cunning man, Old Stockford, um, who inserted a lot of additional information on astrology because the timing of these things is quite important. If you mm-hmm. attempt to do um, ceremonial magic at the wrong time, it just plain won't work. Which is, I think, probably where a lot of people fall down. They, they don't take the preparation, they don't take the time. Um, and then uh, when he passed on, it was passed to a guy called Moses Long, um, who inscribed his name in it. Uh, and he continued to use it and add, add spells, if you like, to it. And then uh, it fell into the hands of Thomas Hearn, who was um, a scholar in Oxford. And uh, he, wrote, he wrote its history up, which was interesting so that one knew where it came from. But this, this book, um, this, this um, Cunning Man's Grimoire, which I've just recently published, has all sorts of short spells, easy shortcuts and things, which are not really part of full ceremonial magic. Full ceremonial magic will take a number of hours to practice, uh, whereas a cunning man's abbreviated uh, magic is a lot faster. Um, Whether it's as effective or not is another matter. 
Can you give us an example of one of the uh, cunning man spells or magic enchantations? Uh, yeah, the um, well, there's a, there's a whole lot of operations as it were in there. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing is to to clear uh, cattle out of a field. Uh, another one was to um, resolve a marriage that had gone wrong. Um, it's called a divorce, uh, yeah. Hmm? It's called a divorce. Yes, well, <laughs> in those days, it's probably a little bit more complicated. Um, can I give you a modern example oh, please of do, uh, sir. marriage that had gone wrong? Yeah. Now, listen, I can't mention any names and because I, if I did, you'd know exactly who it was, but it was it's quite a well-known rock star. And his wife uh, consulted me because she was having um, all sorts of marital problems. He was basically having affairs left, right, and center, which I suppose is part of the rock star life. Um, So I did a a small operation for her because she was conflicted, didn't know what she should do, divorce or whatever. Sure. Um, A week or so later, suddenly things became very clear for her. Uh, She divorced this guy, kicked him out of the house, got a huge settlement from him, moved on and married somebody else. Now, I can't say for sure that that was a result of my uh, operation, but I can say for sure that she'd been umming and ahhing about it for probably several years before then. And uh, I do think that the spirit probably helped clarify her thoughts and and get her to move on. Um, So that's that's a modern example. But so out of the Cunning Man's book... um, Little spells for driving away wolves, foxes, and cats. Now, uh, I don't think we've got much trouble with wolves and foxes, um, but uh, operations involving cats, um, I can I can give you an example. Uh, you asked me earlier whether you can do nasty things with yes. magic, and the yeah. answer is yes. Um, one um, 20th century magician uh, who was rather upset about um, some of his enemies, sent them um, a large number of cats uh, using magic. The, the, the cats turned up uh, in the neighborhood so much so that you could see masses of them coming up the street and howling at night and generally whatever cats do. I don't think they howl, but um, making awful noises. And um, that persisted for a whole week until um, the operation ceased. but hmm. So that was one example. So affecting animals uh, is definitely uh, something that spirits can do. Um, hey, let me ask you, what? sir, is affecting an animal easier than affecting a human? No. No way. No, humans are much easier. Really? So, um, um, well, just to extend that a little bit further... Uh, people who are not easy to affect, uh, people who are, um, how should we say it, a bit crazy or something, but ordinary ordinary humans can be right. affected by spirits uh, fairly easily. Um, a lot of um, people have used magic for um, finding themselves a, a girlfriend or a boyfriend, um, keeping that girlfriend or boyfriend um, and so on. Um the person affected won't really realize why they're affected, but they'll suddenly become enamored of the um, of the magician doing it or the magician's client, uh, and and just be unable to resist the temptation of, of, of um, why going, do you, uh, why do you call yeah, it why do you call it operation, sir? Um, well. In the old grimoires, they used to call it experiment, long before uh, modern science used the word experiment. I see. Um, an experiment, an operation, a procedure, or a technique, um, I suppose because it does sound more more scientific and more clinical because that's the way I like to think about it. I don't think about magic as something that's, that's woo-woo or happens mm-hmm. and sometimes works and sometimes doesn't work. I think about it as a specific operation that you can do and you get a result. But could these operations also be called spells? Uh, yeah, they can. But yeah, okay. spell, <coughs> spell has got so many other things attached to it. You know, immediately um, all the fairy tales that one read uh, or had read to you when you were a kid, mm-hmm. 
um, all the uh, television shows with uh, uh, this kind of thing come to mind. I'm, I'm just, um, you can call them spells if you like, yes. No, I, I, was just, I was just trying to understand the terminology, sir. But I understand your reasoning, because it does put it in a, a much more scientific context. Yeah, otherwise, uh, otherwise you're off into woo-woo land, sure. and it's, um, it's not where I want to go. I want to work with something that is repeatable, mm -hmm. that you have a formula, and you do it, and it works. So when we've heard stories uh, as we were growing up, uh, like, for example, the Pied Piper, um, Rumpelstiltskin, uh, it, it, were these fairy tales based on magic? Yes. Yeah, I think that there's an element of mm -hmm. truth in many of these. Uh, the Pied Piper, certainly. I mean, uh, there are, if you want to use the term spells, for removing or driving away creatures from a particular location. Um, Rumpelstiltskin, uh, that is a fascinating story. It's very hard to sort of go back and validate yeah. them, but, Rumpel's, but uh, the Pied Piper certainly could have been done with uh, uh, basic cunning man magic. All right, sir, stand by. We have to take our final break for this hour. And next on Nation, our guest this hour is Dr. Stephen Skinner. And we're talking about magic this hour here in the Exxon. And if you'd like to uh, visit uh, Dr. Skinner online, his website is www.sskinner.com. That's www.sskinner.com. And uh, Dr. Skinner and I will return as we wrap up this hour here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't forget, if you'd like to watch the Exxon TV channel, there's only one way you can do it, and that's by getting a subscription to Simul TV. To find out more about Simul TV and how you can get something for everyone's budget, I personally like the box set. You get 123 special specialty channels, videos on demand, 500 top-notch video games, and much more. Once again, their website is www.simultv.com. We'll be back on the other side, wrapping up this hour of magic. Don't go away. Watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like Exxon, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, The X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, 
by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember Exxon Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. So Nation, Dr. Stephen Skinner is our special guest this hour. His website is www.sskinner.com. And Dr. Skinner, I want to thank you ever so much for joining us tonight, sir. It's been a, a great pleasure talking to you. Um, if somebody listening tonight wanted to, to do magic, where should he or she start? Uh, well, I suppose they could actually start with one of the first books that I wrote, which was Techniques of High Magic, which I wrote with Francis King. And that gives um, a sort of beginners. I'm sorry, sir, the uh, producer hit the wrong button. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, that, that sort of gives a beginner's thing, um, introduces you to a little bit of basic divination, a um, little bit of basic magic, and... Uh, mentions evocation in passing but um you need then to move on from that to uh probably reading um some of my later books which are more specific but um it's a hard subject to start with just by reading from books you really need to know somebody who has done it and who can guide you um but that's that's not always easy to find how long, if somebody is working with a, a magician, um, how long would it take them before they could actually start doing some spells or, or doing operations? Okay, so, um, yeah, I can recommend one book by a guy called Ashen Chasen. Um, and he's, he's written um, a book uh, which is based on just one small grimoire. So... And he's, he gets pretty re- effective results from mm-hmm. that. How long would it take? Well, you have to assemble the necessary incenses. You have to memorize the invocations. You can't stand there reading them off a piece of paper. Um, all of that's going to take a couple of months. But after that, you should be able to do um, basic uh, spells. Why would you have to memorize the spell instead of reading it? Um, the simple answer is because you don't want it to look like amateur dramatics, um, but it has to come naturally. Uh, the, the spirits are fairly critical. If they see you blundering around, um, reaching for your script and then reading a bit and then looking back again, uh, it's, it's just not going to be smooth, and it needs to be smooth. Uh, they need to feel that you're in, in charge of what's happening. Is there any part of magic that is a placebo effect for the practitioner? Well, there's a lot of New Age uh, magic which suggests that you do various things. Um, and it's, it's more than placebo effect. The, the benefit of some of those is that it will um, give you the feeling that it's going to work. And so psychologically, you're better... Uh, for example, if you were trying to attract a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend, um, by doing some of these new age procedures, you're going to be much more confident when you, you go and actually invite them out or whatever. So from that point of view, yes. But if you want um, results which are you know, truly magic and, and pretty, mal, pretty well uh, impossible to do mm-hmm. through ordinary channels, um, then you have to do it properly, and then it's not a question of a placebo effect. 
Can magic also be equated to the power of belief of the person who is performing the operation then? I can give you a definite answer on that. Belief is not necessary. Um, if you're a complete unbeliever, as long as you're not actively um, you know, negative about it, uh, you do the procedures, the results will work. Really? You don't have to believe. Um, you need belief for religion. You need uh, faith, hope, and belief um, for religion. But for magic, you don't. All you need is to do it right. If magic would have stayed in this sociological advancement uh, way of thinking and not been shunned by religion and other, and other different philosophies out there, well, how far advanced do you think the world would be today? Uh, well, I don't think that it would have um, improved telecommunications or rocketry or anything like mm -hmm. that. Um, but it, it would have added a certain richness. Um, I, I live in Singapore where um, uh, it's, it's not basically Christian. It's, it's basically uh, Buddhist or Hindu. Right. And belief in magic is much stronger here. Uh, the, just down the street from where I live, um, across the border, uh, there's a magician, and he puts up his his um, plaque like a dentist or a, a doctor, mm -hmm. and it describes in three languages what he does, and for a fee, he will do these operations for you. So it, it's accepted as part of um, as part of life. Um, you wouldn't go to him to get your tooth extracted. You wouldn't go to him to get a um, food recipe or something. But if you want something done magically, you can go to him. And people here don't think that's strange. They think that's you know that's part of life, and it works. And he makes a good living at it um, because he's he's ninety percent successful. Um, so what would have happened if the Western world had had this as well? Well, it yes. would have added a certain richness to Western American or European culture, which isn't there now. Um, but I don't think we'd have been any further ahead in, in um, materialistic things. In the past, I'm talking about in the days of, of uh, the early kings and queens of not only the, the United Kingdom but other countries in Europe, were there uh, wizards, sorcerers, magicians as part of the royal court? And yeah, were, were they definitely. really okay? Yes, I can tell you. For example, Elizabeth the mm -hmm. first, um, she inherited some grimoires, their practical books of magic, from Henry the seventh, and she invited John Dee, who was her scientific advisor, to explain them to her so that she could use them or try them out, or so he could do them for her. If you go back a little bit further, uh, Edward IV, um, he actually uh, asked for the spirit Berto to be um, invoked in, in, before him, in front of him. And the, the court magician did that, and he was quite uh, obviously quite pleased with the results. Um, yeah, the, um, the, the courts quite often had people who had these, this expertise as well. You would have somebody who's expert at war. You'd have somebody who's expert at administration and record keeping. Mm -hmm. And you might well have a magician as well. I, I was reading uh, something uh, that you, were, you had sent us, and it was about the Millennium Prophecies, Apocalypse 2000, um, yeah. and Nostradamus. What can you tell us about that, sir? Well, um, I was invited to write a book on Millennium, millennium Prophecies mm -hmm. um, just before the millennium. And I suppose that was rather a very good publishing idea because the book definitely sold a lot of things. People who predict the end of the world, uh, though, are really um, taking, a, taking a big and unnecessarily dangerous step because... I don't think the end, the world is going to end any time soon, and I right. don't think that a mere thousand years or two thousand years since the birth of Jesus Christ is a particularly significant date. Um, there are more significant dates um, in the calendar than that, but I don't think the world is going to end any time soon. 
Uh, but in the book, I went through and examined all sorts of predictions and how they had actually not come true. Uh, the only slight exception is Nostradamus. He made many, many predictions, but um, four of them were actually tied into a specific date. Um, and the ones concerned with the French Revolution were very accurate. Um, there's a couple of his predictions which are still in the future, but I don't think we want to talk about those now. But um, considering that he made hundreds of prophecies, um, that's not a very good score. We've got about a minute and a half left, uh, Dr. Skinner. First of all, again, thank you so much for joining us. And what are your final thoughts for the Exxon Nation listening and watching us tonight around the world? Um, well, I hope that uh, people have um, discovered that there's more to magic mm -hmm. than, than just uh, spells and fairy tales. Uh, and I hope that some of you will be uh, encouraged to explore it yourselves. That's, where, uh, where, that's can, it. where can our listeners and viewers get copies of your book, sir? Well, Amazon. Uh, just look for Stephen Skinner on Amazon, and I have done a number of books. Um, as I said, the most recent is A Cunning Man's Grimoire. Um, Techniques of High Magic is a, a good, simple introduction. But there are dozens of books in between those two, um, and most of them are either to do with magic or uh, uh, Chinese belief. That's a separate interest. Doctor, again, thank you so much for joining us. Take care of yourself, and I look forward to the next time you and I meet back here in the X-Zone. Take care, sir. Thank you. All right, X-Zone Nation, my guest this hour was Dr. Stephen Skinner. And his website is www.sskinner.com. That's it for tonight, Exxon Nation. I'll be back tomorrow night as once again we cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the Exxon, where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. So until then, take care of yourself. We're all on this little planet together. If you can help someone out, do. You'll not only make them feel better but you'll understand what it is to give and it will make you feel better as well as i always say at this time of night to each and every one of you thank you for being part of the exo nation thank you to my good friends at simul tv and our affiliates around the world and always remember to keep your eyes to the sky and your heart to the light good night everyone you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light.
You have heard of the X Zone? Now watch it on Simo TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simo TV. Simo TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today.